Hey everyone, today I'm back in Lost Ark as yesterday we had a pretty big update in the June update for the game and with that we had a bunch of new content but we also had a new class which is going to be the Arcanist which is also what I will be talking about today. I'll be giving a general overview of the class, kind of go into the different playstyles, the mechanics of the class itself and then also showcase the build that I ended up going with in case people are interested in that. So the Arcanist is a new mage class, it's a very melee focused character, a lot of short range abilities, so it's a little bit difficult to play sometimes as you're pretty squishy and you're also supposed to be in melee range quite often, where it is quite easy to get hit, but you are a very mobile class, so that kind of makes up for that. She uses a card deck as her weapon and she can also draw cards to both amplify herself as well as her team's damage output. So it's a pretty solid class overall, although there is a lot of RNG involved with her DPS output. If you get very lucky with RNG, your DPS output is going to be amazing. If you get bad RNG luck, then your DPS is just going to be mediocre. So she's still a decent class, but she could really shine when she does get very good RNG. So the two different mechanics that she plays around are one, her cards every time her identity gauge fills up or when she uses certain skills she draws a card from her deck she has 12 cards in total and all of these cards will apply a different buff or a debuff to the boss that will all be beneficial to either yourself or your team there's no negative cards however some cards are going to be much better than others so depending on which ones you draw your dps output is going to look very different and depending on what cards you draw you might also want to play them in different parts of your rotation and some will also completely change how your rotation works. So you do need to kind of learn what all the cards do and then adjust accordingly. The other aspect of Arcana is the card stacking playstyle, which is where you use your blue skills to apply card stacks onto the boss, and then you use your red skills to detonate those card stacks for massive damage. And those are also the two class engravings that you'll be playing around. The Order of the Emperor engraving focuses around drawing as many cards from your deck as possible, while also adding a 13th card into your deck, which is the Emperor card that does large AoE damage around you, so you'll be focusing your build on lowering your cooldowns as much as possible by going high into swiftness and then also trying to get as many skills that will pull cards for you as well as fill up your identity gauge faster so it's all about drawing as many cards as possible whereas with the empress's grace build you're going to be more focused on the card stacking aspect so you'll be running more blue skills to stack more cards and then also more red skills to detonate those cards you'll be playing a little bit less cards compared to the emperor build but you'll still be drawing and playing cards with the empress build as well. So those are the two different playstyles that you can kind of choose for. Let's then go into the general playstyle and kind of give you a showcase of the class. So over here I am in Trixion. It's my little arcana right here. Now I am going to be playing the Empress build uh, as that is my preferred playstyle and it basically kind of works like this. So every time I use a blue skill, as you can see, uh, you can see it on my character but you can also see it on the boss right here. I'm going to be stacking up cards and four is the maximum that you can get. Once you have four cards on the boss or on whatever target you're fighting, you can use a red skill to detonate those cards. And the more cards you have, the more damage you are going to be doing. And with the Empress engraving, you'll also be doing bonus damage as well as getting some mana regeneration back when you detonate those four cards. Now, when it comes down to the general idea of this build, I guess you could say, is you want to try and get four cards onto the boss, then you can use your crit synergy, which will also give you crit damage. And then you want to use a red skill, stack four cards again, use a second red skill before your buff runs out. And then you kind of repeat that cycle. Now you can also use your yellow skills to try and draw cards as your yellow skills will fill up your identity gauge faster. So if you're playing with the Emperor engraving, you'll be focusing a bit more on getting more yellow skills into your skill build as it will draw more cards for you. But because with Empress, you want to have more blue and red ones. That's why we only have two of them. Essentially, the skill on S is what allows me to instantly draw a card, as you can see right there. Uh, and then the rest is mainly just focusing around stacking up cards and then detonating them. As for the Awakenings, there's two choices. Prismatic Mirror is the one that you'll want to use with the Emperor engraving, as this one will draw two cards for you, whereas Deathbound is going to be better for the Empress engraving, as this will also deal bonus damage depending on how many cards you have stacked onto the boss. Uh, so that's why we'll be using this one. Now, for your cards itself, as I mentioned before, there's 12 of them, 13 if you're running the Emperor engraving, so you can't see this one. 
Um, but basically this just deals damage in your AoE around you and it's pretty good. Uh, this is what I'll be running when I do Chaos Dungeons, because in Chaos Dungeons this is just incredibly good, as it just cleans out all of the mobs with just the press of one button. Now in terms of all of these cards, some are good, some are kind of whatever, and you can just throw them away as you get them, uh, but some are going to be incredibly powerful. So what do we have? Well, we have the Hydra card or Three-Headed Snake. This will change your auto attack, normally it's just this one thing. It'll turn it into a three-stream auto attack and it will also deal bonus damage as well as apply stacks itself. So these stacks right here that I'm applying with my blue skills, I'll be able to apply that with my auto attacks as well when I have the Hydra card active. Mayhem, this is just going to give me attack speed every time I land skills up to 15%, so you're just going to be going really fast with this one. Just use it as you get it because it does last 30 seconds. There's a decent chance you'll pull a second one before the effect runs out. Twisted Fate, this has a chance to give you no damage increase at all, or 40%. So this you basically want to be using right before your burst skills happen, and then you just pray that you land on the 40%, because otherwise this card does nothing for you. Corrosion applies a debuff on the boss, and then you have a chance to deal bonus damage while this debuff is active. Now, even though it's a debuff, it's not going to be affecting your team, so it's just a personal debuff, I guess you could call it. Ghost, this one's kind of useless, just gives you movement speed and also reduces the next three hits of damage that you take, so again, just throw it as you get it. Cull, this is one of your more important cards, as it gives you 100% crit rate and also crit damage, so you do want to make sure that you use this right before your burst. It only lasts for four seconds, so it is very tight to fit everything in there. Balance, this one affects your gameplay a little bit, as this will make your card stacking hit one extra. So when it comes down to our skills, normally this thing only applies two cards, but with the balance card it will apply four. And the same thing goes for our gap closer right here. That one normally applies two, but it will apply four when we do have that card active. When it comes down to this one, your gap closer, this one will only apply three cards on one hit, so you still need to use it twice if you do want to get four of them. Then we have Judgment, this is another one of your very important cards, as this will make it so that all of your Ruin skills will deal damage as if there were 4 stacks on the boss. So right now, my Ruin skills don't really do damage if I don't have stacks on the boss, but if I have Judgment active, I can basically use all of my Ruin skills back to back, and they will deal damage as if there were 4 cards on the boss. It's especially important for this skill right here, Serendipity, because if I just reset my cooldown, this deals damage in 2 hits, and normally the first hit only benefits from the cards being detonated, the second one does not. When we have the Judgment card active, both hits will count, as if there are 4 cards on the boss. So that's why Serendipity becomes your more priority skill to use when Judgment is active. And it also works on your Awakening, because uh, of course your Awakening also... Uh, benefits from having cards on the boss. But one important thing to note about the Awakening is that it does not eat away at the cards. So if I have, for example, my four cards on the boss and I use my Awakening, as you can see, it did damage, but it didn't eat away at the stacks. You actually need to use a red skill to eat away at the stacks. So something important to note. Then we have the Moon card. This will give you cooldown reduction and MP recovery for 30 seconds. Kind of an important card because like getting more cooldown reduction is always nice, of course. But the MP recovery is very important, especially before you get your Relic set. Arcana has a lot of MP issues at the early game, which is why you'll also see me running... Let me scroll up right here. Uh, conviction and Judgment on two of my cards, like the ones that I want to be using back to back to get four stacks. I'm running Conviction Judgment on these. Uh, to get myself mana regeneration because I'm just going to be running out otherwise. And if I don't draw the moon card or the star card, this one recovers full MP, um, then I'm still going to be running out on mana even though I'm running Conviction Judgment. So something to keep in mind. So this one, play it when you get it, gives you cooldown reduction MP recovery for 30 seconds again. You might draw a second one before it runs out. Star card fully refunds all of your mana, but it will also lower all of your active cooldowns by 15%. So in general, you'll want to be using this after you've done your burst. You set up your burst, you do it, you press this to get your cooldowns back faster. Royal card just draws two new cards for you, so you want to make sure that you don't have any cards active in your slots when you use this. And then we have Wheel of Fortune, which will reset the cooldown of the next skill that you use. And yes, this works on your Awakening. So you can play this card, Awakening, and then you can get a second Awakening in if you want to do so. 
Um, if you don't have your awakening active, you generally want to use this on Celestial Rain. But again, if you have Judgment active, then you want to use this on Serendipity instead to get two of those out because that's going to be more damage underneath Judgment. So as you can see, it's going to be some decision making in here. Something like the balance will change your play style. Uh, Three-headed snake or Hydra cards will also change your play style as you'll want to be mixing in uh, some auto attacks and such. So stuff will change. As for the actual skill build that I went for, currently I don't have that many skill points yet because I'm only level 51. Uh, by the time that I'm level 60, I'm gonna have access to a whole lot more. But this is what I have right now. So Quadra Accelerate, I'm running Conviction on this because as I mentioned before, I need the mana regeneration. Faster attack speed, a chance to draw four cards instead of only two. So you do need to pay a little bit of attention to that. And then just extra damage over here. And we have Scratch Dealer, just excellent mobility for now. Uh, you can also take Exposed Weakness, and this way you can also use this to apply your crit synergy onto the boss. And then running that together with this is going to make it so that you will have 100% uptime on your crit synergy. Uh, if you don't run it on there, you don't. But if you take the mobility, uh, you can actually go very far with this, which is going to be quite useful because you do need to be very close up to the boss uh, for, for example, these two skills. They're very close range. Uh, so that's why getting the extra mobility can be quite useful. Um, but of course, take what you need. And you can take some bonus damage. And you can also take this one, which makes you go back. So let me, for example, take this. Uh, if you can like go in, and then you can just jump back to the position that you were before. Um, if, for example, the boss does a melee pattern that you have to dodge. Then Spiral Edge, quick prep to just get cooldown reduction. This is going to make it so that we get plus one cards. So this allows us to get four cards in total and then also gives us movement speed. So after we use this, we run really fast, even though I have zero swiftness in this build. Uh, when you go Emperor Engraving, you go full on swiftness with some crit. When you go Emperor's Engraving, you go full on specialization and then some crit as well. So even though we run zero swiftness on this build, because we do have cooldown reduction coming from our moon card as well as our star card, I get movement speed from Ghost. I also get movement speed from this skill. Um, so that's going to make it so that I'm just going to still be very mobile, and I believe I get movement speed for this as well. Yes, I do. So when I come back, I am still going to have some movement speed as well. So even though I run zero swiftness, I'm still going to be fairly mobile. So those are your three stacking skills. As for your detonating skills, we have Serendipity, Piercing Strike, then Lucky Blow. This is going to make it so that for each stack that I have on the boss, I have a chance to deal bonus crit damage. 20% chance per stack, so 80% in total, pretty high odds of landing that. And this one gives an extra 20% chance to trigger the level 2 tripod, so bringing it all the way up to 100%. Celestial Rain, this is the biggest damage one. We run a crit rate tripod, and why I'll tell in just a second. Some bonus damage and then also weak point detection, so that you can do more damage onto the bosses. Now the reason why the crit rate one here is important is because this gives you 20% crit rate, then our crit synergy is 10%, then we also get 40% extra crit rate on this, and also crit damage uh, from your return. So we're going to be up very high into the crit rate department, even though I am only running just crit onto my necklace. So the 15% crit from here, stacked together with 10% is 25, another 40 is going to be 65, and then another 20% from here is going to be 85 crit rate. And if you then run on top of that Adrenaline, uh, which I am running level 2 Adrenaline, it's another 10% added onto that. I uh, would have wanted to get it to level 3, but I couldn't with the accessories that I currently have available to me. Um, of course, uh, accessories with Empress Grace right now that actually have a good stat are incredibly expensive. Um, so that is why I went for this build right now, and I'll be wanting to max out Adrenaline when I can in the future. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm running it like this right now. So I almost have essentially 100% crit rate on Celestial Rain as well as on Secret Garden, because this one also has a crit rate tripod, and you can level them up. So when you do level them up, um, you're going to be pretty much hitting 100% crit rate with these skills. Again, bonus damage when they're affected by four stacks, and then some extra damage as well. Uh, I already talked about return a little bit, gives you crit rate uh, for your entire party, crit rate and crit damage for yourself for 5 seconds, so you want to be using this right before your burst window, uh, and then also jump extra AoE. This is also your counter by the way, uh, Serendipity is a second counter, and this one also hits twice, and I do believe that both hits actually count for the counter. Last skill then is going to be Call of Destiny, just some extra attack speed. 
Uh, this is to grant yourself a card when you use the skill. It's only 20%, but I do believe it goes up to 40% at max level. Um, so you want to be leveling this one and then just extra cards for bonus damage. Now, the reason why you'll also see that I have some protection runes on these three red skills is because all three of your red skills are basically instant damage. So there's basically no real read to run something like a Gale Wind rune. You also don't need wealth runes with this build. So that's why we run protection runes to make it so that we can run barricades because this will basically make it so that we get 16% damage bonus on the three skills that actually deal damage. The rest of your skills don't deal high damage um, so that's why barricade is actually a pretty decent engraving for her. If you want to run something else you could run Curse doll for example um, but this at least gives you pretty much the same damage output without having the negative effects to it. Curse doll is going to be stronger of course because it does work on everything instead of only three of your skills um, but this is just a more safe tripod to run especially considering that Arcana is a very squishy character you also need to be in melee range. Um, having that negative attached to Cursed Doll could be a little bit like less desirable, I guess you could say. So as for stats, as I mentioned before, going crit on the necklace and then specialization on everything else. As for my engravings, Hitmaster, because you're a non-positional class, Grudge, because, well, it's Grudge, Barricade explained before, and then Adrenaline will pretty much get you up to that 100% crit rate. And then we also have Empress's Grace at level 1. This is most efficient at level 1, because uh, it only gains 5% extra damage uh, when we level this up. You can go level 3 if you want to, um, but level 1 is generally going to be the play. As for gems, we just want 3 damage gems onto our 3 red skills. All of the other gems are going to be cooldown reduction, so we run cooldown reduction on literally all of our skills. And then for cars, I'm just running the Lost Wind Cliff right now. So that's the overview of my build, that's kind of what Arcana is like. Fun class to play, very active, lots of thinking involved as well, like depending on the cards that you get. Very fun class to play, but it does take a little while to get used to. But that's going to do it for me. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my patrons for their support. And I'll see you in the next one.